Hi everyone, I'm Said, and I'm going to talk about a recent work decent to delete gradient-based methods for machine learning. And this is a joint work with Seth Neal and Aaron Roth. So machine learning or data deletion is motivated by the right to be forgotten of GDPR, which says people have the right to request their data to be deleted from any company that holds their data. For example, Facebook users might at any time ask Facebook to delete their personal data, and Facebook has to accommodate these kind of requests. But the question that immediately arises is that, what does it mean to delete data? Well, the first thing that comes to mind is that we have a database that stores these data points, so we can easily go ahead and delete the data from the database. But is this actually enough? We know that data is used to learn predictive models for the company. And simply deleting a data point from a database does not remove the influence of the data points in those predictive models deployed by the company. So what we really want is to remove the influence that an individual's data has on the behavior of any part of the system, including those predictive models. So given that a trivial solution for data deletion that comes to mind is that when a deletion request arrives, update your database by deleting that data point and then fully retrain all your models on the updated database. But as you can imagine, this solution requires enormous computation because deletion requests might arrive frequently over time and we don't wanna keep retraining all our models. But maybe we can do better than that. And indeed, there is a much more interesting alternative approach to the data deletion problem, which is instead of fully retraining every time there is a deletion request, maybe we can have an unlearning or deletion algorithm whose model outputs are indistinguishable from the model outputs that would have arisen from fully retraining. And as long as the deletion algorithm is faster than fully retraining, we would strongly prefer that. So now let's formalize a definition for a deletion algorithm. At training time, we have some data set D and a training algorithm A, which gives us the output model A of D. Now imagine at deletion time, you want to delete some data point Z and let's denote the deletion algorithm by R sub A that takes as inputs the original data set D and the point Z, which is going to be deleted and any other auxiliary input that might facilitate the deletion procedure. Then we say R sub A is a deletion algorithm for A if the output distribution of R sub A is equal to the output distribution that would have arisen from fully retraining, which is running the training algorithm A on the data set D minus C. And of course, this guarantee must hold for every data set D and every data point C. And we can further relax this definition and ask for epsilon on learning, which requires that those two distributions, where one is the output distribution of the deletion algorithm and another is the output distribution of retraining, are epsilon close to each other in a differential privacy sense which means that the distributions are within the multiplicative factor of e to the epsilon of each other. And obviously the smaller the epsilon, the stronger our deletion guarantee will be. And I wanna quickly mention that in all our algorithms, we will use the Gaussian mechanism of differential privacy to guarantee epsilon and learning. Okay, so now that we have a formal definition of unlearning in hand, given some budget epsilon for deletion or unlearning, and given the computation budget that we have, our goal is to design accurate unlearning algorithms. So we need to study the trade-offs between accuracy, unlearning, and computation. And I want to emphasize that it is important to keep computation in these trade-offs because like I said earlier in the talk, one trivial solution for machine unlearning is fully retraining which gets you perfect deletion with parameter epsilon being zero, but in terms of computation, it is not desirable. Okay, now let's focus on one of the most common learning settings, which is convex empirical risk minimization. 
In this setting, we have a loss function that takes a d-dimensional vector, which we call a parameter, and a data point in some domain z as inputs and outputs a real valued number, which is the loss of that parameter on that data point. And there exists a collection of n data points d, and our goal is to find a parameter that minimizes the empirical loss on the data set. And a typical algorithm to use in this setting is gradient descent, which starts from an initial point in the parameter space and proceeds by iteratively taking steps in the direction of the gradient of the loss function. We measure the computation cost of gradient descent by the number of iterations, capital T, that it runs for, and the accuracy for gradient descent is measured by the loss of the parameter output by gradient descent minus the minimum loss. So for the rest of the talk, we will be in this ERM setting, and we will be using algorithms that have gradient descent updates. In the interest of time, I'm not going to describe our deletion algorithms in detail, but will rather give you the observations or ideas that form the basis of our proposed algorithms. The first idea is that at deletion time, we can initialize the gradient descent algorithm at the output model we have from the training, because that model has come very close to the optimizer on the training data set. And we also expect that the optimizer on the training data set to be close to the optimizer on the data set we have at deletion time, because those data sets differ in only one element, which is the data point that is going to be deleted. So more formally, it is known that when the loss function is strongly convex with parameter m, then the optimizers on two data sets that differ in only one element are within one by m n of each other in L2 norm, where n is the size of the data set. So to, so to give a visual description of this initialization idea, imagine at training time, we initialize our gradient descent at some parameter beta zero, and after t iterations, we get some parameter beta t, which has come close to the optimizer on the training data set d. And note that we can choose t large enough such that the gap between the output data t and the optimizer is small, in particular in the order of 1 by mn. And then we know by the fact on the left-hand side that the distance between the optimizer on the training data set d and the optimizer on the updated data set d minus c is also in the order of 1 by mn. And so at deletion time, if we initialize our gradient descent at the output of training data t, we are guaranteed that the initial distance to the new optimizer is small. And so we can get fast convergence to the new optimizer, in particular faster than fully retraining a gradient descent algorithm that uses random initialization. And finally, if the loss function is only convex, we can regularize it and make things work properly for us. So without getting into the details, I just want to mention that our methods work for the more general class of convex loss functions. So the second idea we can use to get fast deletion algorithms is distributed training. Imagine the training procedure goes by first partitioning the data set into k chunks and then running gradient descent on each chunk separately and finally aggregating those k models. And the observation here is that after we've done distributed training and when a deletion request arrives, only one of the partitions gets affected. And so we only need to update the model corresponding to that partition. And so for a given fixed computation budget, which is the number of gradient computations in our case, we can run more iterations of gradient descent on the affected partition, because now the number of data points in the affected partition is a smaller by a factor of k compared to the original data set. And this will help us get fast deletion algorithms, at least in some regimes. So let me briefly talk about the type of guarantees that our algorithms satisfy. Of course, there are a lot more details to our algorithms that I didn't discuss in this talk, 
especially the one that uses distributed training. But as an example, when the loss function is convex and smooth, then given epsilon budget for unlearning, and let's say capital I budget for the number of iterations of gradient descent that we are allowed to use, then our deletion algorithms satisfy accuracy of order that you see in the blue box, which has polynomial dependency on sample size n in the denominator. Whereas if we wanted to use full retraining to get the same level of accuracy, you would need a number of iterations that grows polynomially with the sample size n. And so our deletion algorithm in this case is substantially faster than fully retraining. And some quick notes before I finish the talk. In the paper, we consider data addition as well as data deletion. And our algor algorithms allow for arbitrarily long sequence of additions and deletions, not only one. And we also introduce several conceptual distinctions in the paper, like what is perfect on learning or what are strong and weak on learning, which I encourage people to read. Thank you very much for your, for your attention.